Hi friends, so what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to build piecewise functions using Desmos. So here's what it's going to look like when we finish. And one of the cool things that you'll be able to do is you'll be able to move this point on this function. So now, even though it's like got these corners and these weird bits of lines, your point's going to move on your function. We'll talk more about why piecewise functions are important, but for right now, inside of this lesson, all you're gonna be focused on is learning how to use Desmos to be able to create a piecewise function. So let's get started. Um, I'm just gonna start a new blank graph. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, I'm going to make a folder. So you can make a quick folder. It's just nice to keep stuff organized. And I'm going to write it just function. Okay. And so I'm going to define my first function. And I'm going to use function notation to do that. So I'm just going to type F. And then 1. And it immediately gives a subscript. It's so nice. And a parenthesis X. All right. And now I'm going to define my first function as just a line. And the line has a negative slope. And I'd like that slope, I like the x-intercept in this case to be 2, or excuse me, negative 2. So I'm just going to put in negative 2. Now, you might be thinking this is actually kind of a cool thing. Because look, my x-intercept is negative 2. My y-intercept is negative 2. And you can think about why that is. Now, I'm going to actually want to restrict this function. I don't want it to be going on forever and ever. So the way you restrict a function in Desmos is a curly bracket. And then you put your lower limit, if you have one, lower limit. And then I'm going to use less than or equal. And you can get to the less than or equal either using the, the keyboard right here, or you can use uh, your, your own keyboard with, um, in Mac with the option key and then the less than symbol. X, and I want it to be, excuse me, let's get a negative 5 in there. And I want it to be less than negative two. All right. So you can see what's going on. It nicely restricts that function for us. I'm going to have our second function f2 of x equals x plus two. And I'm going to make a restriction for that. I want it to go from negative two less than or equal to x less than or equal to zero. And I have to have my, whoops, let's look and type at the same time. That's good. Less than or equal to zero and a curly bracket. All right. Perfect. My next function, f3, and you'll see why we're naming these things with subscripts here in a bit, equals, again, the opposite of x. Now I want the y-intercept to be 2, okay? And I want to restrict that function. I want to it have to go from 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4. Um, and you're going to get an opportunity to make any function that you want in a bit. All right, so there is our piecewise function. It has three pieces, and they're all lines. And, of course, you can get crazy with this stuff, um, and you'll be able to have a chance to explore with that later. Now, so these right now are individual pieces. They're individual functions. And what a piecewise function does is it combines all of those things into one function. What's nice about that is we can put in Desmos, we can put a point on it and move it around. And then in general, in mathematics, we can take that function and we can then operate on it. We can do all kinds of different stuff. And that's where we're headed with all of this work. Okay, so now what I would like to do is I'm going to make just a general function that puts all of those guys together. And I'm just going to call that plain old f of x. Now, the syntax, the way you have to type this in, is a little bit complicated, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit a curly bracket. Now, it looks a little bit different, so a curly bracket. And now my favorite way of doing this is going up here and copying my restriction, bringing it back down here, hitting paste. So the first thing you have to put in is your restriction. Now I have to tell it what function I want. And the way you tell it what function you want is by using colon. And then you can just tell it the function, which I love this, f1 of x. And look at that. It's got that first piece. 
Now we just got to rinse and repeat to get the rest of that in there. The thing that you do, the syntax that you use to separate those functions for Desmos is just a comma. So I'm going to go back up now and I'm going to copy my restriction for my second graph. I'm going to use a colon to now say, hey, now I'm going to tell you what the function is. Here's my function. I'm just copying and pasting. Second part of the function. And now you might have to move this over here a little bit to get some more screen real estate or, or, or minim, you know, make your screen size smaller, whatever you need to do. Okay. So restriction, colon, function, comma, restriction, colon, function, comma, restriction, colon, function, we're done. Now, we'll have up in the class the syntax for this. I know I forget it all the time too. So we'll have the notation up so that you can remember what that, what the syntax is for this. Now, let me show you what's so cool about this. Now, I can turn this off and you can still see your other pieces and notice how I do that. And I can turn that off, I can turn this off, I can turn this off, I can turn this off, and I can turn our other function back off. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna put a point on our new function. So I'm just gonna say I'm gonna do it with, I'm gonna do it just with a number first, and then we'll do it with a slider. So I'm just gonna say, hey, I want my x value to be one, and then I want to know what my function value is at one. There we go. Now, of course, we can be more <laughs> cool. So now I'm just going to say, hey, I just want some value A, some number A, and I want to evaluate that our function using A. So we make a slider. And now what happens? Oh, goodness. It's gone. Oh, goodness, it's gone. And the way we can, if you don't want that to happen, what we can do is we can jump in here and we can restrict the domain for our value, our A value. And I'm just going to say I want it to go from negative 5, looks like up to positive, looks up to positive 4 right here. Okay. And now you click out of there, and now your value is restricted. So that's it, friends. Um, what I hope you can do, you're going to go back and practice this, is that you can make individual functions that are restricted. Individual functions that are restricted. You can combine those into a piecewise function. You can put a point on that function, and you can put a generalized point using a slider on that function.